Welcome back. Stasa 23 here, back again with some knife therapy. And today I have two knives from Attention to Detail Mercantile, which is made up of Mr. Doug Esposito and his wife, Stacy. Uh, Doug's a, a retired U.S. Marine Corps vet, and his wife is a retired Army vet. And combined, they have a total of 30 years of uh, service. Uh, outstanding. I can't thank y'all enough. And... After talking with Mr. Doug uh, at Blade Show last year in Atlanta, I could really tell that he had a passion for knives, but even more so, he liked to connect and create relationships with his customers. Um, I talked with him for a long while, and they were him and his wife are such awesome people that uh, I, it was a pleasure to buy not only one knife, I went back to the booth, went talk to him even more, and bought a second knife from him. These are both custom knives, and these are his Mark 1s. Uh, this is the medium variations, and he's only been making knives for around five years, I think, because I think at Blade Show is four years, so I'm guessing it's around five, and it, it blows my mind how good he is. He, he was mainly a fixed blade uh, maker before he got into the folders here recently, and to know that he's, he hasn't been making folders that long, it, it's it's pretty impressive. That's all I can say. Um, <clears throat> I ended up testing this one. Uh, so we'll, we'll kind of, you know, talk on this one a little bit. And mainly because this one is a like compound grind. And I, I just thought this one would be an easier test subject. My buddy Copper Dice just uh, carried this one for a while. And he said he absolutely loved it. But we're going to put this one aside and we'll focus on mainly the the drop point for right now. I mean, the, the regular grind. So let's get the specs out of the way. You have a total length of 7.5 inches on the medium size. Uh, that's that perfect uh, carryability for me as an EDC knife. You have a blade length of 3.25 inches. You have a grip area from right here to the back of 3 and 5 eighths inches. You have a handle scale thickness from the middle of both sides of, uh, let's see, 0.58 inches. And a close width in the pocket from here to here is 1.61 inches. So it's, it's a little bulky in the pocket, but I knew that going into it. Uh, you have a, a pretty stout blade stock thickness um, coming in at 0.165 inches. And... It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Uh, I've been having this knife for a good while. Like I said, I bought it at Blade Show uh, last year, and I've carried it a ton. Let's take a closer look at this. You have a nice, attractive drop point with a high, hollow grind on there. Now, going into it, I knew that these were more geared toward a hard-use knife, so it's not going to be what I usually go for, like a you know, super slicer with the thin edge geometry, but sometimes the design just speaks to me and the maker speaks to me and that was the case here. And um, I get pleasure from this, you know, something like this. Uh, on your primary, you have a vertical satin and then on and on the swedge and on the flats, you have a very subtle uh, horizontal satin and I, I think it contrasts very well in the light can really see those grinds shining and the blade steel on this model and the other one is both CPM 3V um, he had several other steels out there but I love 3V especially in a hard use knife because it's a very tough steel and it's definitely one you will have to maintain because it's, because it is a tool steel it will rust on you if you don't uh, take care of it now being that he has a nice satin finish on here you know, it, it'll, it'll take a little bit more for it to rust, but I keep it coated at all times. One thing that I thought looked was a cool uh, thing, basically you have a sterile blade, and as you can see, you can kind of see something peeking out right there, and when you close the knife, you can see the attention to detail, 2021, the date on it, and then flip it over, and you can see the CPM 3V uh, marking. But in the open position, you barely, you just see a hint of it up there, so it looks like a completely sterile blade. And on a custom knife, I think that's a, a very nice feature there. And you can see 
it is wearing a polish edge right now uh, after the testing I did sharpen it up I wanted to see I was going to test it some more see how it performed with the polish edge um, just that's something I, I like to do you don't have any jimping up here but it definitely wasn't needed you have a nice comfortable spot to put your thumb there you do have uh, a nice bevel on both sides right there so it's not sharp almost has like a crowned effect but it's it's more of a bevel if you look down the spine it's just a, a nice little chamfer going on uh, let's close it up and take a look at this hardware you have a nice ginormous T15 pivot that's nice and crisp and you have T8 hardware that looks like custom hardware I'm not sure if it is or not but very nice and crisp detail on there very tight fitting uh, T8 hardware you do have a lanyard hole that will fit 550 if that's your thing and let's take a look at these beautiful scales I think he calls this his barbell finish I'm not certain on that <laughs> he had see, he has so many awesome textures uh, and I think this one was his gunner grip or maybe golf ball dimple I'm not sure but just they play so well in the lights depending on how you turn them this one looks like three-dimensional and this one almost looks like a 1911 grip to me um, <laughs> you could see what he did was on this one you have the fully contoured thick slabs of titanium and he had the milling pattern on here but being those peaks were nice and aggressive he knocked those peaks off so it would be more comfortable in hand and I think that was very nicely done uh, you also have softening going on around the edges and on this particular one you have flow through construction with three barrel standoffs so you can get added rigidity from side to side with the scales for that third standoff right there plus you have the stop pin and same on this one this one is just a flipper this one you have the thumb hole and the flipper I like this I like the multiple deployments on it and uh, you have that same flow through construction big old chunks of titanium now this one I'm sure it's because of the pattern is a flat scale knife with this pattern in it this this one is a little bit more aggressive just from the nature of the pattern in the inside of the holes and uh, like I said this is that's main one another reason why I decided to uh, test on this one uh, let's close it up you do have a lock bar stabilizer which is a nice thing you see Rick Hinder I think he's the one that came up with that and basically what a, rock, a lock bar stabilizer is is in a high stress situation if you're squeezing on the knife it keeps you from pushing the lock the titanium lock bar over that way which you know could destroy the lock could even snap it and then also it keeps you from when you disengage in that lock you can't push it any further than that because if you push this this lock bar past the frame it could unspring the tension on the lock and then could make your lock inoperable I mean that would be that would be pretty uh, terrible um, now this is one thing I, I'm sorry I did not put it back on but it came with just a plain titanium bent uh, pocket clip and this pocket clip I had on me and it fit perfectly this is an artisan clip shame on me but uh, I thought it looked a lot better I did it on both of them actually and after I did it I saw on his site that he actually sells a clip that's kind of resemble that kind of resembles this uh, from time to time you can see it on his site I, I didn't see any available when I checked here in the, uh, the other day but he does offer a mill titanium clip uh, aftermarket <laughs> let's uh, check out the action the action on this knife has gotten smoother and smoother the more I uh, open and close it you don't have any jimping on that flipper tab but I don't have any trouble slipping off it comes out very fast the detent just listen to this nice positive click to it very nice positive click to the detent uh, bearings you have a ceramic detent ball I don't think I better show you all that on that black one it's like a black and the, the detent ball is definitely a ceramic detent ball uh, your access to the lock bar 
is very nice because of these chamfers on both sides and the width of the um, the frame opening so it's comfortable to disengage I don't have any lock stick now I do have a little bit of lock stick on the other one but it's it's gotten better and, and I don't mind lock stick especially on a knife like this this one does not have a steel lock bar insert but they are both carbonized which carbonization basically what it is is it's a machine that allows you to basically weld a thin layer of tungsten carbide onto the face of the titanium which is at around a 70 or so hrc and uh, the reason you do that is because the titanium's at like a 45 hrc and this blade steel you know is way higher than that i don't know exactly where he rock wells his 3v2 but let's say 58 60. well that's way harder than the titanium so if it was just titanium on this hardened steel it would it would deform that titanium and end up curling it over and it would be uh 100 lock up so you put that carbonization on there and it makes it really hard and it makes that uh, lock last uh, a, a long time and you probably won't see it uh, wear out and I'm sure if any if you ever had any issues with the knife whatsoever as long as you aren't doing any, anything stupid with the knife I'm sure Mr. Doug would take care of you in a heartbeat he seems like a very stand-up guy uh, so not something I was worried about in the least um, the ergonomics now I I really like this almost like a rifle stock handle. You have this little cutout right there, so if you want to choke back and and use that, you can. But up here is where I thought it was super comfortable. Everything I cut, I, I had no issues until I got to the wood. Now this it's not saying a whole lot because this, first of all, this is not a knife you would be doing this type of cutting with and um, I don't usually put all my force into my cutting I don't have a lot of uh, cutting tasks that require me to you know exert that much force but whenever I was pushing at my hardest into the wood I did notice that right up here uh, on this tip right here where the texture is it was starting to aggravate the hand but you can also get these scales without texture on them so that wouldn't have been an issue if you know that was the case but i've chose these so you know it's not in my opinion that's not a big deal whatsoever uh, with the with the contoured scales on here it, it was it was a pleasure i, I fe really felt locked in you had this nice flipper tab as a guard so i didn't feel like i would you know come up on the blade any if i had to do some kind of stabbing i think this would take care of you pretty good um this knife has a black coating on it i'm not sure what it is maybe pvd or something like that but i will say that it has held up excellent i don't have any i've carried this a good bit and i don't think i have any marring at all on it um i mean a little on the pocket clip but it's held up nicely especially you have this texture that he sanded off the peaks on it and it can't really get to the inside of that unless it gouged in there and i mean i've hit i know i've hit stuff with this i've clanked it on other knives i don't i don't have any issues with that so that's always awesome to see and this this one right here has the purple anodizing on it and like i said copper dice carried this at work and around home maybe a little a little of it wearing off right there not not really anything major maybe on the corners but th that's common for uh, anodization on titanium the the front scale still looks nice no problem there yeah i just i love both of these for different reasons uh, i think the grind on this one looks outstanding i love that thumb hole on this one uh, see this one has a little bit of lock stick but it's something that uh, I, I, like I said, I don't really mind on, you know, a non, you know, I don't really mind on a titanium frame lock because that way I know it's it's going to stay locked up on me if I'm doing something that's that's requiring a lot more pressure. Um, let's see, what else? We just talked about the lock and I forgot to show you all the lock up on it. It is sitting at around, I'd say 30, 40% and it has not moved over in the least even after all the testing 
that's where it was whenever I got it and that's where it's been it's absolutely bank vault I can't muscle any play side to side up or down very very tight lock up on these both of them all right let's grab our weight and then we'll do some size comparisons 5.07 ounces and like I said it's a hard use knife so I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that uh, let's do some size comparisons. I'm going to do several just in case you were trying to decide if you wanted a medium or large. Um, we got the Spyderco PM2 and the Para 3. So uh, it's a lot closer uh, to the Para 3 in length. Hinder XM18 3.5 inch. And let's move these up a little bit. And you have the 3 inch XM18. Once again, that three inch is going to be closer. I don't know, they're about in the middle of those two. Chris Reeves, Sabenza 21 large, and the 21 small in Kosi. I mean, in Singo, my bad. So it's in the middle of those two as well. These are from somebody he said he, he gets designed, he's, he's a friend of, and that is Mixed Rider. Uh, the Strider SNG and the Strider PT. There you go. All right, I know I didn't discuss price with you because these are custom knives. I don't know exactly uh, what this knife would go for. I got it at Blade Show. I don't know if I, you know, they, they had a Blade Show special or not. Uh, so I will leave links down to his site. So you can check that out for yourself. But we'll go to the nitpicks complaints. This is, like I said, once again, this is a custom knife hand. A lot of hand work on this knife. So I'm, I'm not going to be too critical. Um, I, I think it's obvious that I would have, I would have rather see the mill titanium clip here. But you know, being that is geared toward a rough, tough knife, um, I, I get it. I, I get why he put just a bent clip on there. Um, also. Something that, you know, is not really a big deal because I knew going into it, uh, I, I had a little hot spot right here from the texture on the titanium, but I could have gotten one without any texture. So, and it's not something, it's not some cutting that I would normally be doing with a folder. I mean, I, I was really bearing down, which was causing me to really squeeze on the knife. And it wasn't until I got toward the end to where this was, you know, starting to aggravate me. Now, I didn't stop the cutting, so was it really that big of a deal? Um, other than that, I, I love the knife. Um, I will say this for right now. I will be buying more knives from Mr. Doug Esposito. Uh, his Mark II and Mark III uh, look outstanding. The Mark III, he, he sent me some pictures the other day of a couple of them that he has out. And I will be buying one of those because I absolutely love his design flair and they just speak to me. Um, you know, sometimes that's, that's all it takes for you to want to purchase a knife. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns about anything... Please leave it down below. I'd love to hear y'all thoughts on the Mark I medium folders. Um, and uh, definitely thank um, Mr. Doug and Miss Stacy for their service. I, I can't thank them enough. I, I did not serve, so uh, they did it for me. And uh, both awesome, awesome individuals. If you get a chance to talk to them at Blade Show or any other time, definitely, definitely do yourself a favor and give them a, a, a chat. All right, guys and girls, I hope everybody's having an absolute wonderful day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.